Time Veterans Day, we kick off a quadruple header here on CBS Sports Network, and we come to you from West Point along the banks of the Hudson River here at Mikey Stadium. What better place to kick things off on Veterans Day than right here today? 14 Army seniors will play their final home games here at Mikey Stadium, and they've all played Missouri, quite a role in Army's impressive turnaround. Today, they look to cap off the home portion of the 2017 season undefeated on Veterans Day. Playing from Veterans Day, uh, I mean, that's that's everything. That's kind of one of the reasons why I came here. It's a lot for us to play, be able to play for them and know that we're representing the Army in America. Very special just to represent all those heroes that we've had throughout our country's history. Beautiful West Point Saturday. The Duke Blue Devils from the ACC in town to take on Jeff Monk in 7-2. Army Black Knights, Duke started the season great. They've fallen on tough times as of late. Army's won five in a row. They enter this one with a record of 7-2. Great to see you and be with you. Happy Veterans Day to all those veterans out there alongside my broadcast partner, Jay Feely. Tina Servacio on the field. My name is Ben Holden. It is a true pleasure and an honor to be with you on Veterans Day. And Jay, last week for us and for Army and all <laughs> their special. fans, it was a pleasure and an honor to watch Ahmad Bradshaw. Big day here, though, for the seniors and Army's program. They've got a chance to go undefeated at home. Yes, first, happy Veterans Day to you as well. Thank you served you. in the Navy. So special to be here. And what a game that was last weekend. Ahmad Bradshaw and that Army team went in, did something they had to do and beat Air Force. Just so special to watch what Ahmad Bradshaw has done, who he's become, not making mistakes, running this triple option exactly the way Brent Davis wants and just being so effective running the ball. It was so good. Let's relive it and take a look back at some of the key things. What did he do so well in this game? An academy record for a quarterback, 265. He put that team on his back and willed them to victory. In our meetings, we said he was resolute, was not going to let them be defeated. It meant so much, just so physical and tough. And he doesn't make mistakes, hasn't fumbled the ball hardly at all this year, and just being so decisive with his decisions. He was certainly that, leading Army to a 21-0 victory last week. Now, David Cutcliffe. Very good coach, done a great job at Duke's program. His team has fallen on tough times after a 4-0 start. They're now 4-5. and He's got a young quarterback in Daniel Jones. What's the book on him today? I talked to David Cutcliffe on the field, and he said, I have not lost confidence in his quarterback. He knows that he can become exactly who he wants to be. He's had problems with accuracy, decision-making. He needs his playmakers, Ramming and Lloyd and Wilson, to step up and to help him. They're all weapons, and Daniel Jones, as Jay says, will try to do that here today. Third member of our broadcast team, as I mentioned, we're glad to have Tina Servacio with us, and she's got more on Army seniors and their defense. Tina. And Ben, one of those players to watch on defense today, linebacker Alex Aukerman, who's coming off a dominating performance against Air Force last week. But looking back, Aukerman was actually recruited by the previous coaching staff as a skinny safety. And when I spoke to defensive coordinator Jay Bateman yesterday, he told me he had no idea who Aukerman was. During freshman base Basic training. He gets off the bus. We do some drills. I think he stinks. But look at Augerman today. He has evolved into a 260 pound linebacker with a certain skill and timing that gets him to quarterbacks and hands that brings players down. So when you watch Augerman in his final game today at Mikey Stadium, along with all of these other seniors, think about the impact they have had on this Army program and the standards they now leave for the future of Army football. Thanks so much, Tina. Great to have you with us today. I love Jay Bateman's honesty, and <laughs> we'll get into that as we move along. And Jay, in this series, Dukes won four of the last five. Army played him tight last year down there, but lost. Last time Duke was here, a big win, 44-3, led by Jeremy Cash. And it's like a postcard feeling, no matter what, whether it's 33 or not. I mean, a beautiful day here to begin the college football Saturday on our network. It's chilly. It's a little windy down there on that field. The Arizona blood's <laughs> a little thin, huh? That's right. <laughs> There's David Cutcliffe, and he is a classy man. He's got a lot of respect for Army. He's thrilled to have his team here for this game today, and he'll try to get his guys going. And Jeff Munkin, who's become a cult hero around these parts, turning this program around. What a job he's done now in year four. Well, on the core, they love him. You know, whether it's picking up chairs or jumping into the core of cadets, <laughs> you know, they were special. They come back last Saturday after that big win against Air Force, and there's people at 1 a.m. waiting for him yeah. to celebrate. That was really cool for that team. 
The He's core. done an excellent job. Yeah, the core, as you mentioned, they absolutely adore him. And set to go is Duke. Will kick it away. It's Jack Driggers, a freshman walk-on, who will try to get it down deep. But a low kick, and it'll bounce at the 15. It's picked up there by Kel Walker, the dangerous walker. Kel Walker gets a hole. Walker up the sideline. He's forced out of bounds. It was the kicker, Driggers, that forced him out. But a huge return to begin the game for Army. Huge return, Ben. That was big. They don't have big returns here. And if Driggers doesn't and make that play, that's a touchdown for Kel Walker. 38-yard kick return, Chick-fil-A lineup. Samad Bradshaw, his numbers just continue to be eye-popping. Eight yards a carry. You know, they don't throw the ball at all. They're last in the FBS, only 30 passing yards per game. Bradshaw averages just over one completion per game. But even though teams know that he's going to run the ball, they can't stop him. Air Force had no answer for him last week. Darnell Wolfolk, the fullback lined up behind him, and they give it off to Wolfolk, and he'll plow his way ahead to the 49, stopped by Serenord. Let me take a look further at the Army offense brought to us by Chick-fil-A. Who you highlight today, Jay? Well, I think if they're going to be successful today, and they've struggled against this Duke defense, Darnell Wolfolk, the fullback position has to be successful. It's something that they have struggled running the fullback against Duke. But Duke, with their aggressive, blitzing type of defense that Army doesn't normally see, if the fullback can be successful, Brent Davis said, that's the quickest way and the easiest way not to have negative plays. Off to a good start. Second down and seven. But Duke there getting to Wolfolk and... He may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Hornbuckle made the stop. Chick-fil-A lineup for Duke. Who do you highlight there today? Ben Humphreys, their middle linebacker, excellent linebacker, the vocal leader of that team, had 10 tackles last year against this Army team. High effort kind of guy. And he, he just, the two linebackers, Joe Giles Harris and Ben Humphreys, they lead this team. They certainly do. And particulars on Humphreys there on our eye bar. And, Duke's been off for a week. He had eight tackles there last game against Virginia Tech. So third and seven. Kalen Holt now the fullback behind Bradshaw. Bradshaw turns, keeps, there's the pitch. Holt's got it. But he's yanked out of bounds. Going to be short of the first down as Giles Harris got to him first there. He is a good one, as you said, Jay. So what do we do here on fourth down, Jay? Interesting decision. You're looking at fourth and a long two. You know, so far this year, they've been aggressive on fourth down. 14 of 21, 67% on fourth down. There's a decision, this organization, this team, Jeff Monk and Brent Davis, they made in the offseason. We're going to be aggressive on fourth down. Connor Slump is the fullback behind Bradshaw on fourth and two. Bradshaw changing the play. Duke shifting. Slump didn't get it. Duke's defense did the job. They bottle him up on the left side. Giles Harris leading the charge. So a turnover on downs, and Duke will get the football for the first time today. Going with their big fullback, their powerful fullback, Connor Slumka, the biggest fullback they have. But that Duke defense was up to the challenge. A big stop for them. They have done a really good job, as good as anybody, against this triple option attack. First to 10, Time for our Chick-fil-A lineup. There's the young man, Daniel Jones. The numbers on him, a dual threat guy. Eight touchdowns and seven picks. First play of the game from scrimmage. Offensively for Duke. And they give it off to Ramming. Little jet sweep. And he gets it out to the 48-yard line. A pickup of three. We'll take a look at the Chick-fil-A starters for Duke. Who do you highlight there, Jay? You know, the running back, Sean Wilson, he's a home run threat. A guy that anytime he gets the ball, he's dangerous. Not big, five foot nine, 185 pounds, but really quick. And Army's got to watch the cutbacks. You know, when he gets the ball, cutting back and then exploding to that next level. Five rushing touchdowns. Here he goes. They tripped him up a bit, but coming over was Christensen to take him down. And it's going to be about three yards to convert the first down. Army defense brought to us by Chick-fil-A. Who's your guy there today? Well, nowhere else can you go than James Nautical playing like an animal out there. <laughs> you know, stepped in. They didn't know what they were going to get at that linebacker position after losing Tim and King, and he has been excellent. 36 tackles in the last three games. 
And a breakthrough year has Nautical indeed. So a third and two now facing Duke. They need to get the ball just over the 45. And it's Jones, and he does it. He kept it on the fake to Wilson. And Duke moves the chain. So Daniel Jones, the redshirt sophomore out of Charlotte, North Carolina, converts on third and two. Big, strong, tough quarterback. Has struggled, as I said in the open, with some decision-making, accuracy. His playmakers haven't stepped up like they thought they would. You know, but Cutcliffe told us that he's confident in him. He knows that he's going to become the quarterback that he believes he can be, and he knows good quarterbacks when he sees them. He does. He knows an awful lot about it. Here's a flea flicker. They're going to take a shot. Jones, though, goes short underneath. It is caught, and it's a first down for the Blue Devils. The catch is made by Chambers, and they've got the first down, so Cutcliffe going trickery there, gain of 18, Jay. They wanted to go deep to T.J. Ramey, number three. He's their big play receiver. Good job by Army recognizing not allowing Ramey to get deep, and a good job by Jones going to his underneath route and getting the first down. Yeah, no question about it. So first down and 10 from the 25. Jones takes a look, fires open man, wide open man. That's ramming, and he's got the first down just across the 11. They're going to give him the 10-yard line. So it's a first down and 10 gain of 15. They're in the red zone, and it's a first and goal situation. So Duke moving their way down the field here in relatively easy fashion so far. This is where they've struggled, though, in the red zone this year. Only 39% touchdown rate. That's not good at all. No. Jay Bateman's defense has been very good in the red zone. They're only allowing 52% of the trips into the red zone for touchdowns. John Voigt on the tackle there for Jay Bateman. Gain of three on the run by Wilson. Unbelievable job he did last week against Air Force, oh. getting the shutout on the road, shutting down that triple option attack. First time Air Force had been shut out in 306 games. That was third longest in the FBS. First time they were shut out at home since 1980. Lloyd's the motion man. They give it off on the ground. Wilson lunges forward, gets to the four-yard line, third and goal coming up. This is where Wilson isn't good. I, I like him as a back. He reminds me a lot of Tariq Cohen, the rookie for the Chicago Bears, same size, quickness, but he's only five foot nine, 185 pounds, so not good in, out of the backfield when you're in short yardage situation. They line him up all the way up top. Army's got problems with coverage right now up top. Five wide for Duke. Big play here early on. It's Wilson up top right there. They're trying to get him isolated. Jones bobble it, gathers. Now forced to run around. Jones still with it, knocked away, deflected away. Getting his hand up was Kenneth Brinson. Fourth and goal, they'll bring on the field goal unit. So Army holds and they force the field goal attempt. If you're gonna watch late as this develops, watch 81 Copenhaver right in the middle of your screen, wide open right now, right there, and he can't find him. Tries to go late to ramming, and the problems in the red zone for Duke continue. So Austin Parker, who's 12 of 16, will try from 22 yards. And Parker, low kick, but he got it through. And Duke's got the first points. They lead 3-0. I watched Duke kickers, all of their kickers. There was about four of them kicking that way in warm-ups, and they all struggled in the wind and the cold going that way. So Duke could not convert. Kenneth Brinson comes up and knocks it away. Army holds Duke to a field goal. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by USAA. Insurance, banking, and investments tailored for the military community. By Golden Corral. Your choice rules. And by those that live like a pro. GMC. Those were some of the Duke head coaches in the College Football Hall of Fame, Howard Jones. Wallace Wade and of course the old ball coach Steve Spurrier. Of course Mike Krzyzewski a West Point grad the basketball coach at Duke. 
Joe Albarisi, who's a lacrosse coach here, spent a lot of time at Duke as an assistant. Good ties. 38-yard return. And the opening kick by Kel Walker. And to your point, yeah, we haven't seen that from Army in, in quite a while, that, that big of a return. Yeah, a couple weeks ago they had, a, they had a long one called back. It didn't count, but that's a big return. They weren't able to cash it in. Got stopped on fourth down, and Duke turned it into three points. But a good job by Army's defense not allowing them into the end zone. Big stand there by Bateman's guys. Driggers has got it teed up. Made the tackle on Walker on that 38-yard return to begin the game. And this kick a little bit better as Walker will take it from the six. Kel Walker runs into a whole host of white shirts and is dropped at the 20-yard line. Jay, let's take a look at your extra points, your keys to the game in your mind here today. What are they? Pretty specific. No turnovers for Duke. If they do that, I think they can win the game. At least five tackles for a loss. You saw that on that first drive, getting in the backfield. Army, 50% or better on third and fourth down and short. We just saw them not get that fourth down conversion. And they have to shut down Sean Wilson, both as a running back and on kickoff returns where he's so dangerous. Army's second possession of the game. 8.28 remaining in the opening quarter. Duke on top, 3-0. Trainer, one of the Army seniors. Bradshaw, one of those Army seniors. And Bradshaw gets it out just over the 25. Bradshaw as Walker. the tackle was made by Demukeji, Victor Demukeji, the outstanding freshman. You talk about stopping Army on third and short. You know, Duke over the last two years, when they've beaten Army, two for 12 Army is on third and two or less, which is stunning considering the fact that this year they're 31 for 31 converting third and two or shorter. That is amazing. Stunning. That is amazing. Here they go right up to God Davidson. Andy Davidson who had Army's only touchdown Davidson's against here. Duke last year with a big game there. Jeremy McDuffie, McDuffie the, the safety with a stop there. On Davidson, a gain of 19. The See the down blocking, opening up the big Brought hole for M4. Davidson, exploding through. They have to have good fullback production to be effective. Yards on the this defense for Duke, the normally it's a 4-2-5. They're running a 4-3-4 today. So they got an extra linebacker, and then they're blitzing, aggressive, something Army doesn't usually see. Most teams against the triple option, they're not run blitzing, but they're aggressive. So if the fullback can gash him right in the middle, that leads to a lot of success. Davidson, seven 100-yard games in his career, and he's off to a good start right here. He gets eight on the first down run, so it sets up a very short second down. Alonzo Saxton, the second with a tackle. One of my notes I have for Davidson is bull. He's a bull, and he creates his own crease. That's exactly what he did right there. What about trash? What happened to trash? <laughs> he's a good trash runner as well. That's right. <laughs> But yeah, those are all spot on, of course. Of eight on the play. That's Second from Brent the Davis. Davidson remains in the game, and he's got the first down. Andy Davidson. What'd you say? What were the particulars on him again? That looked like it again. Gain of seven. <laughs> he's a bull, and he creates his own crease. Just get out of my way. <laughs> Brent Davis has the luxury of having four really good fullbacks, more depth than they've ever had under Jeff Munkin and Brent Davis. And they've really just decided we're not going to throw the ball. You know, they've, they've made this decision. We're more effective running it. We're not going to throw it. When Jeff Munkin was asked this week about Ahmad Bradshaw and throwing the ball, he said that's just not something that he does. Hey, it, it works. <laughs> they lead the country in rushing. Why, why change it? Duke pursuing Darnell Woolfolk there. They force him to go outside, not what he wants to do. And now flags fly and tempers getting hot here at Mikey. Just inside of six minutes remaining in the opening quarter, and the Blue Devils fired up. There was Edgar Serenord right there. It's a gain of two if it stands. A referee today, first year in the ACC, is Trey Blake there in the white hat. This all occurred after the play. Yes, it did. Here's Blake. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense number 92, 15-yard penalty, first down. So that's on Edgar Serenor, the redshirt junior out of Miami. Keep coming. Watch for 92 right there, coming in the middle of your screen. 
not a good decision. Knocking somebody over and stands over the top of him. He didn't like the block of Jekyll through there. No, he didn't. And that's what the wide receivers do. Jeff and Jekyll this week said, yeah. we're not wide receivers, we're wide tackles. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so first down and 10 Army. Bradshaw, gonna keep it, took a shot. He took a heavy hit from Saxton, who stepped up into the hole quickly and dropped him on Bradshaw to the turf. Armed Forces football proudly supported by GMC. Gain of five for Bradshaw. Lonzo Saxon, so good, experienced, knows their scheme really well, just a solid tackler. Not a, not a spectacular athlete, but really smart and a very good player. He said earlier in the week in his portion of the press conference, he says, I like going against the option. You can play physical against it. He just did it there. Now he had 10 tackles against Virginia Tech. He did. Second on their team that day, two weeks ago, and they lost against Virginia Tech. Second and six. Yep. Bradshaw yep. keeps. Bradshaw! Oh, he's going to be close. This is what we saw last week against Air Force, something that Army has not done. They saved it for the Air Force game. Ahmad Bradshaw faking and then following the running back through the hole out of the shotgun. A little wrinkle that Brent Davis put in. Really successful last week against Air Force. Gave them trouble. And you're going to continue to see it because it gives them a little different wrinkle. They're not throwing the ball at all, so they have to find ways to be creative. And Bradshaw last week, 265 yards, 11.5 a carry against Air Force. Yeah. Six big plays on that play. They call it the follow play. He picked up six. They give him the first down. So the Black Knights inside of the red zone. First and 10 from the 14-yard line. Bradshaw. Keeps it again, faked the hand off to Walker, takes it down to the eight yard line. That's the same play. So he fakes to Kel Walker, and then he follows him through the hole. Kel Walker, as he comes through the hole, whoever's coming to tackle him, he just blocks him, and then and then Ahmad Bradshaw can kind of pick his way. And he did such a good job last week of being patient, picking his way, and then exploding into that next level. So this drive approaching Army-like numbers of double-digit plays. Three and a half to go in the first. Duke on top on a 22-yard field goal as we're approaching three minutes remaining in this quarter. Davidson, who's had three carries for 34 yards on this drive, is behind Bradshaw, gets it. They get to him in a hurry, but a good lean forward by Davidson to the five-yard line. It's going to be third and a yard, Jay. It's Trey Hornbuckle made the stop. All right, so here you go. Here's third and short. I told you at the beginning of this drive, Army is 31 of 31 on the year, converting third and two or shorter, which when I read that stat, it was staggering to me. That's mind-blowing. Really is. Here's play number 10 on third and a yard. Bradshaw's got it. He just fouled the center, the senior out of Chandler, Arizona. Bryce Holland, first and goal Army. One of the things Army's done so well this year, they're 51% on third down because they've been so good at converting third and two or shorter. The offensive line and this blocking surging forward, getting that push and Bradshaw getting the first down. They've had continuity and health on that offensive yeah. line. Kurtz, Boylan, Holland, Houghton, Toth have been there all year. That's such a key for this triple option. Really is. It's been an issue the last couple of years, but as you say, Jay, not this year. First and goal, one foot! with a three-yard score, and the cannons go off, and Mikey is Wolfolk takes in a three-yard touchdown. Ninth of the season for Darnell Wolfolk to lead the team. Physically imposing drive, imposing your will on the other team. You know what they're going to do, and you just can't stop it. They run it right down your throat. Indeed the case. Zach Potter the hold, and it's knocked through and good by Blake Wilson. Army comes back after a Duke field goal. They lead it 7-3. Army physical, posing football. Wolfo getting his ninth touchdown, putting Army on top. So late in the first quarter, Army chewed up a ton of time. It's what they do on that drive. 
11 plays, Jay, 80 yards, 617, capped off by their workhorse fullback, Darnell Wolfolk. They average almost 10 minutes more than their opponent in time of possession on the year. You don't get a lot of opportunities. You have to take advantage of the drives that you have. You know, last week we talked about it before yeah. the Air Force game. How many, you know, both these teams are on the triple option. So how many times you would get the ball? We thought it'd be five or six. That's what it ended up being. Yeah, we nailed that. There is David Cutcliffe. Started coaching when he was 24 years old at Banks High School in Birmingham, Alabama. He wasn't much older than his, than his seniors. That was great talking to him about yeah, that yesterday. Awesome. I really enjoyed that. Spent a lot of time with Bear Bryant, one of his mentors. Loved listening to him talk about Bear Bryant. Said, always have a plan. Don't be surprised by anything. That was one of his big takeaways. Yeah. He's a good man. Very honest. I love it. Yeah. When you, when you, there's certain coaches that are not going to give you anything. Yep. David Cluckup, not one of those guys. going to sit down and tell you the way it is. Their SID does a great job. Our right. Chase, yep. yeah, excellent. They do. Great job by all their staff. We appreciate their help. Of course, the folks at Army. It's our final home game here this year with the Black Knights. Tip of the cap to those folks as well. And it's bobbled. And brought out. Wilson did a good job, though, after bobbling that ball to get it out. Pretty good field position for him, considering. And we got a chance now to take a look at our GMC game changer, Jay. And John Voigt, he is one of their seniors. They have 16 total, but they honoring 14 today. He's one of them. What a career he's had. We got a chance to talk to him again this week. We've done it a number, a number of times. Just so impressive. You know, there's certain guys when you meet them, you know that he represents exactly what they want a West Point cadet to represent. And John Voigt is one of those guys. There's no question about it. Made that big play against Eastern Michigan, the onside kick, less than a minute to go. So that was the highlight of his career. Said his brother yeah. was really proud of him on Luke that play. Plays for the Cardinals. That's right. We said that during the play. Good hands. Here's Jones taking a shot. Receiver tripped up. And the intended target there was TJ Ramming. And it brings up second and 10. As Jay said, Ramming and Lloyd, the guys they love to go to, and they couldn't. Connect there. Just a straight go route here for Ramming. Running down the field, had a step, and you can see their feet got caught up. And a lot of times they won't call it when the feet get caught up, even though Ramming had a step. Jones, I think, overthrew him. Here's Jones right back to it. This one is caught. This is Lloyd, and Lloyd gets buried at the 25. Gibson in there, among others, along with Christensen. Also got some help from Cam Jones. Third and seven coming up now. For Daniel Jones and the Duke offense. This defense for Army's gotten better and better every week, only giving up 19 points a game. That's 20th in the country. Third and seven. They need the 32. Bringing the blitz. Jones stands in, delivers, strike caught, first down, Duke, and more. And it's reeled in by T.J. Reming. First down, Blue Devils gain a 15. Came in, leading the team in receptions, leading the team in receiving yards. An injured Army player there. Can't see who that is at this point. As they tend to him with a minute seven left. Cam Jones, the injured player, the youngster they're tending to now, Jay. They brought the blitz off the corner. You see Ramming coming in number three right across the middle underneath the second level behind the linebackers in front of the secondary. A good job by Jones stepping in and delivering a pass and Ramming making the catch. Made that tackle Jones did. And reached down for his lower leg as they tend to him. Jay Bateman's been kind of trying to find out who's going to be that corner opposite Mike Reynolds. They've gone through a number of guys. McClinton, Riley's back. They haven't had him all year until last week. That was big. Yeah. They got Ryan England in the secondary back who had been hurt since the Ohio State game. That was huge because no they've been taking advantage of in the middle of the field when Ryan England was out. So they continue to tend to Cam Jones. Let's take a look back and see. Just rolled hard on it after we made the tackle here, Jay.
right leg is walking off, so that's a good sign. So they'll check him on the sideline. 107 to play in the opening quarter. It's first and 10 after the pass play from Jones to Ramming. Daniel Jones, four of six for 51 yards so far for Duke. He bottled it. He's got it. Pressure again. Not at the head of it. He gets him. James not at all like he was shot out of a cannon. Absolutely. You can see the explosiveness and the speed that James Nottigal has. Why he's been so good. Watch right in the middle of your screen. It's just going to come right through there and get the sack. His fifth sack on the year. Love what Jay Bateman told us. You know, they, they hadn't played him. They felt like we needed to get him out there. He was just too good sitting behind King and Tim. He said after the Ohio State game, he said, this dude's got to play. They got him on the field. This is Wilson. Sean Wilson. Army's playing Christensen. That dude can play, too. He's been great for him this season in that Jay Bateman defense. Nautical only had 16 tackles last year. The end of the first quarter. So David Cutcliffe's team, after a four yard gain there, that ends the opening quarter. They're down by four on the road as Duke and Army continue their rivalry. Army leads it 7 3 here from West Point. You're watching college football on CBS Sports Network. to all of our former servicemen and women and all of the current military. We want to say a huge thank you from Duke University and Duke football. There's the class and respect of David Cutcliffe. He said coming to West Point means so much to him. He had a lot of family and friends that served in World War II and in Vietnam. Classy man, a lot of respect for him. So here we go, Jay. Big play coming up here to start quarter number two. With Jay Feely, Tina Servacio on the field. My name is Ben Holden. Great to have you with us here on this Veterans Day 2017. Third and 16 for Duke. Jones forced out. Voigt's after him, flying on the play, throws it away, and that one's likely going to come back for a hold. Should be intentional grounding as well. Definitely didn't get back to the line of scrimmage. Trey Blake, our referee. Voigt was in there putting the pressure on Jones. Blake, a young guy, his first year as the referee in the ACC. Discussing whether a receiver was over there. There's two fouls during the play. Holding. Offense. That penalty is declined. Attention to the ground, Dave. Offense, number 17. The penalty is lost down at the spot of the foul. It'll be fourth down. So with all that said from Blake, the punt group's coming on. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's, a, that's what you need to know about that. A lot of pressure from Jay Bateman on that series. Bring in the blitzes, sacks, pressure on the quarterback. That's what he told us that he had to do. He wanted to fool Daniel Jones, Parker and he wanted to get pressure on him. So Austin Parker on to punt it away. 41.7. It's blocked. It's blocked by Army and picked up by the Black Knights, and they're going to take it in for the touchdown. Boudreau returns it, and Army with a... 13, three lead, 25 yards on the return. Beautiful work to block it. The scoop and score for the Black Knights. What a play by Army and their special teams. Something that Army has struggled with over the last couple of years. Much better this year. They blocked three field goals already this year. Wilson to try to make it 14-3. Javari Bordeaux was the young man that scooped it up and took it back 25. 
And just like that, Jay, 20 seconds into the second quarter, Army is on top, 14 to three. Jeff Munkin put a priority on special teams. Coming up, making a huge block, leading to the touchdown, Army up 14-3. So Army on top here early in the second quarter, 14-3, 25 yards on the return, their second block punt this season. Javari Boudreau with the return. Davidson blocked it, Jay. He just lines up right in the middle. It's just a great individual effort. The wall has to come together and block inside out, and Davidson, the big fullback, just puts his shoulder down and blows him up and goes through them and blocks that. That's all on the wall. You have to come together. You have three guys to block one guy. The most dangerous guy is the one right in the middle. It's Andy Davidson. Tough job when you got a big fullback like Andy Davidson, but an excellent play and a huge play for Army, getting the block and the touchdown, putting him up 14-3. You can see David Klucko saying, what is going on? We have to block the guy right in the middle. You know he's coming right to you. So that was the first punt that Parker had blocked all year. As he doubles as their kicker and their punter, Nick Schrag. He doubles as the Army punter and the kickoff guy. Had a great season this year, has Schrag. Senior day here for Army, Veterans Day. Army fell behind 3-0, but now leads this game 14-3. And it'll be taken by Wilson, then he hesitated. And they get down there and bury him shy of the 15-yard line. Good work by Donovan Lynch to get down there. Let's go! Time now to take a look at our Mercedes-Benz player profile, and it's Elijah Riley coming back onto the field now, Jay. Came back last week. There was an academic issue they had to wait for, wait for it to get resolved before they could bring him back. They didn't want to risk anything, and that's a big pickup to have him back in that secondary. Took over last year for the late Brandon Jackson. Cam Jones back in the game as well, up top of your screen on the corner. On the ground, this is Wilson, and Army gets to the ball quickly. Riley in there, right on cue. He must have known we were doing the piece on him there. He made the tackle. Probably their best cover corner, and he comes up and he will hit you. Jay Bateman has been dying to get him back on the field. Was excited last week, played well against Air Force. That whole defense did, everybody on the field. Second down play, they just got a piece of him there. Ryan England, one of those 14 seniors playing his final home game, made the tackle. He missed significant time, hurting that Ohio State game, as you said, and big stop there for him. If Ryan England right here, number eight, doesn't make this tackle, then Wilson, who has breakaway speed, may be gone. You can see just a little tackle from behind. And they were lucky to get that play because if Wilson hits the hole, his straight line speed is excellent. And they weren't going to catch him. He's already got the Duke record. Six touchdown runs of 50 or more in his career. First up play, Jones fires. And the catch is made. That's a first down out just shy of the 35. Aaron Young with a reception. They have to get other guys involved over the last five weeks. 68% of the receptions have been either ramming or Jonathan Lloyd number five. They got to diversify. I think the tight ends in this game have a good matchup against Army. That was just the 10th grab of the season for Young. Wilson's lined up next to Jones. Jones dumps it off over the middle. Wilson's got it, broke a tackle, and he extended it enough to get the first down to the 45. James Nautigo made the tackle, first down for Duke. Gain of 11. He increased his strength this year, trying to get bigger and stronger so he can be an every down back. Sean Wilson, I like him a lot. You talked about five runs over, or six runs six, over yeah. 50. He's got 10 plays over 50, couple receptions, couple kickoff returns. Today's first and 10 line being brought to you by Golden Corral. Here's Jones, the fake, and batted down and nearly intercepted. 
It was tipped in trying to dive and make that play was the defensive captain John Voigt. An excellent job by Voigt. If you don't get in the backfield and get your hands up, perfect job, and then a great job recognizing seeing the ball and almost making the play. He, he almost pulled the double, uh, daily double, right? <laughs> That's right. Jones, 7 of 10, Jay, for 77 thus far. Britton Brown's in the backfield with him now. Brown, a youngster. Redshirt freshman. Physical, physical play down there as they give it off to Brown. Redshirt freshman out of Canton, Georgia. Boy, Atuga made the tackle third and seven coming up. They like Brown a lot. You know, he's coming into his own. He had a shoulder injury earlier in the year. I think he can be a really good back. Somebody the Army recruited hard. Yeah. Duke to a four on third down. They need seven. They need the Army 45. Jones and knocked away. There's a flag though that came in late. Riley was over there on ramming. They're gonna call and pass interference. Ramming was open for a second. Riley dove in there and knocked the ball away, and then the flag came out. Pass interference, defense, number eight. The ball replaced that with Robert Foul. First foul. Well, that's Ryan England, number eight, but on that play covering was Riley. Unless it was somewhere else. They threw the flag right here. Yeah, it's, it's Riley. He's got yeah. his right arm on the back of Ramy. Ramy was open as he dives in. They just called the wrong number. They did. There was Riley. First and 10, Duke. Inside of Army territory. Brown remains the back next to Jones. They fake to him. They look to him. They check off. There's a throw wide open. That is too easy. That's TJ ramming with a catch. You cannot give anyone, let alone him, that much space. He's just so quick. He's got excellent quickness, shiftiness. He ran Riley back and then quickly pulled up and came back. And because he's so fast and quick and can change directions, he created that separation. He's got seven career 100 yard games, does ramming. Four, 10 catch or more games in his career. Yeah. the turnover and it's Army football cut cliff asking Jones what happened and we'll look back at the tape to figure it out they're going with the zone read Jones wasn't definitive Wilson didn't think he was going to get it Army ends up with it presentation of the making of a leader is brought to you by USAA. Bill Carpenter built a life of honor, bravery, and excellence on the football field and on the field of battle. As an All-American at split end for the Black Knights, he earned the nickname The Lonesome End, a nod to his team's unusual strategy of placing him outside of huddles and near the far sideline. He graduated in 1960 and served two tours in Vietnam proving his leadership in the most dire of circumstances. With a bullet lodged in his arm, he threw a hand grenade to dismantle enemy troops in 1964. Other heroics followed, earning Carpenter a silver star and a distinguished service cross, the country's second highest wartime medal. He continued to rise through the ranks before retiring as a Lieutenant General. Bill Carpenter, outstanding on any field. This presentation of The Making of a Leader was brought to you by USAA. Knights defeat the Blue Devils 35-21. He is now an executive officer, United States Army in Lawton, Oklahoma. Thank you for your service and thanks to all the veterans that served, we appreciate that.
Speaking of a couple of veterans, we had yeah. a couple of the 96 guys up here in our booth just now. Yep. Colin Kearns, the nose tackle, Tony Bianchi, my buddy. Yep. That's the last team to go undefeated at home. They said, we don't want to be known as the 96 team. We want this team to do it. They do. It's been a long road back for Army football, and Jeff Munkin <laughs> leading the charge. So Duke turns the football over. And Jeff Munkin's crew has it back, Jay. It's a big possession for Duke, big possession for Army if they can extend this thing to a 21-3 lead. Yeah, and you can't afford, if you're Duke, to have turnovers. We talked about that in my keys at the open because Army keeps the ball for such a long period of time, doesn't give you a lot of possessions. They have not turned the ball over much this year at all offensively. Can't say that I've seen this formation this year. I kind of like it. Bradshaw times it off. Trainer, and he's dropped. Good pursuit there. They get to the ball in a hurry. That is Mark Gilbert, their outstanding cornerback with four picks, but a big tackle there, Jay. NFL ability, cousin of Jarrell Rivas, who I played with. Eight tackles against Virginia, really talented. Jim Knowles, the defensive coordinator, said he's growing in the understanding of the game. So Gilbert Island? <laughs> I think he's got a little ways to go yeah. before he gets to that point. A little bit. Army one of two on third down as we get it back to the game. Third and nine here. Big, big conversion attempt here as Wolfolk's back in the game for Army. Bradshaw. My, oh my, looks to throw. He's got a man up. It's Walker. Cal Walker. How about Brent Davis? That tricky Brent Davis. No attempts last week, and they do that. Well, they didn't have third and long very often last week. It was windy. You're in third and nine. You haven't shown it. And this is what Brent Davis wants. He wants pass efficiency, not necessarily passing yards. You're going to see him come out right here at the bottom of your screen, just running a streak. Gets lost in the shuffle, and Ahmad Bradshaw does a good job of finding him and completing the pass. 42 yards passing for Army. Beautiful job indeed. Wolfolk the carry. They go back to the ground. They're inside of the red zone to the 19 yard line. Gain of three with less than nine to play until halftime. Ahmad Bradshaw coming in only 28% completions, only 10 completions on the year. That was his 11th completion. They have gone away from throwing. One of the reasons they stopped throwing the ball so much is because they don't want incompletions that stop the clock. They want yeah. to limit negative play so interceptions sacks they lead the country only giving up one sack on the year one sack that is impressive Bradshaw breaks through the senior Bradshaw on senior day takes it in for the touchdown 18 yard run is second in as many weeks and Army has opened up a 17 point lead on Bradshaw's 22nd career rushing touchdown. You talked about how important this drive was for that Duke defense. Bradshaw hits Walker on the big completion and then caps it off with a touchdown. And Army is off and rolling. They are indeed rolling. Wilson on for the third time today for the point after out of the hold of Zach Potter. 21 to 3, Army on top. Little dance there from the holder and the kicker. And Jay, it all started the big pass to Kel Walker right here. Look at that strike from Bradshaw. That's a huge play for Army. And then they cap it off, get in the end zone. Bradshaw doing what he normally does, running the ball, physical hard. They got the lead. So with 8.20 to play until halftime, Army's up by 18. They scored on a 25-yard block punt for a touchdown, a return, a fumble. They cap it off here, Jay. Watch Darnell Wolfolk, the fullback, and Brent Toth, the tackle. Brent Toth is going to seal. Wolfolk is going to lead the way and get a big block on the linebacker, and then Ahmad Bradshaw into the end zone. And he told us last week, and he was so good, 265 yards against Air Force. Look at his eyes surveying the field. He understands the triple option so well now. But he said, our O-line deserves as much credit as me. They were physically dominating. Kalen Holt, the fullback, dominated Air Force. Big blocks like Wolfolk's block there. 
So Army's cashed in on those turnovers. We mentioned 14 points, Wilson back deep. Army scored 21 points, Jay, in the last 851. Bradshaw, the 18-yard touchdown, five plays, 64 yards, took 238. And this ball stays in bounds. And Wilson. That was a poor play by Wilson. You have to understand as a kickoff returner what to do. You come up, that ball, when it sits there, all you got to do is put your foot out here on the sideline and touch the ball. And it's, if he takes his right foot and puts it out of bounds and touches the ball, it's a kick out of bounds. They would have got the ball at the 35-yard line because he doesn't. They get the ball at the 14-yard line. A big mistake there by Duke and Wilson. Second or third time we've seen that together this yeah, year. That's something you go over, you teach, you harp on. I know that Duke staff, they're very meticulous. I'm sure they've covered it. Just a mistake. Sean Wilson starts in the backfield, but it's Daniel Jones. Cole Christensen takes him down. We go down to Tina Servacio on the field. Tina. Ben, earlier defensive coordinator Jay Bateman was talking to his defense, and as effective as they have been, and this is coming off the big Ryan England play, he said to his secondary, he says, guys, I want you to give the quarterback one more second. You're coming in on him too fast. He's still demanding excellence from that defense, Ben. Thanks, Tina. Good stuff. And Ryan England, Jay Bateman has told us for the last three years, he's the smartest guy he's ever been around. What a tackle on the outside. How about the way Nautical took down Lloyd? James Nautical playing so well. After that first drive by Duke, where they got Ooh. down inside the 10 and then had to settle for a field goal, they have not done anything against this Jay Bateman defense. Third and three. Five wide for Duke. Jones, open man, catch made. First down, Blue Devils, one of their tight ends, Davis Copenhaver. They'll move the sticks. It's about time. It's the first time they've thrown to a tight end today. Helm and Copenhaver, they're two tight ends. That's the matchup that I think favors Duke. They got to continue to go to their tight ends. Inside of seven minutes to play in this first half. Jones stands in, fires, catch made. Jones is there to make the tackle on Chris Taylor, the redshirt junior, for a good pickup there for Duke on first down. And today's first and 10 line is brought to you by Golden Corral. Gain of eight. Jones gives off. Wilson gets free. Here's that speed. Nautical, though, got him. What an effort by James Nautical saying, you're not getting away wow. from me. That's really impressive. It was a good run by Wilson. As soon as he got the corner, something Jay Bateman said we can't allow him to do is get outside. But for Nautical to chase him Ooh. down, that was an excellent play. Shows you the speed that James Nautical has because Sean Wilson can fly. He really, really can in a 22-yard pickup. He was a great track guy in high school was Nautical. You saw it there, Jones. Taylor broke a tackle from Jones. And he was dragged down by Aukerman all the way from his end spot. But Duke moving the field here nicely. Down they go. Five and a half to play in the quarter. You could see Jones understanding Chris Taylor has very good vertical speed. Gave a big cushion. Taylor comes back, makes, makes the catch. A good drive by Duke. Have to answer. Got to find a way to get six. Gain of 17 on that play. Double pass. Here they go. Double pass. Ramming the lefty. And this one is incomplete they looked for Taylor Gibson was down there Gibby Gibson who made that great play against Eastern Michigan two point try to win the game with 49 seconds to go broke it up it's the third time they've tried that with ramming second and ten for the 20 so be the eighth play of the drive against Bateman's defense for Duke Wilson's the back to the left of Daniel Jones he was 11 of 14 for a buck 16. Gonna keep it. 
He's got a ton of room. And Jones has got the first down into the red zone. He goes down to the 16-yard line, goes number 17 for a gain of 12. Look at this come open right here. Excellent job of just creating space by that offensive line. And we talked about the fact that Jones can run. Threw for over 300, ran for over 100 against Northwest, and that was his best game of the year. Best looking drive they put together yet. Chucks it out there. Catch made by Lloyd. England forced him out of bounds. To the 10 yard line goes Duke's offense. TJ Ramey, only 5'10 and 165, had a big block outside there. Pick up some extra yardage. Duke really needs a touchdown here. Can't, yeah, they do. We talked about on their first drive the red zone struggles for them scoring and how good Army has been in the red zone. Got to get in the end zone. Jones, run pass option, keeps it, dives. He's got a first down inside of the five to the four yard line. First and goal for Duke. They're going fast. Gain of six. Fake it again. Jones has got it. Jones takes it in. It's a touchdown for the Blue Devils. They cash in on a beautifully executed drive there. Jones, the four yard touchdown run, and it's 21 9, Army. You're right, Ben. That was beautiful. Getting the ball to a different player. Taylor, get him involved. Copenhaver, get him involved. Get some runs by Jones. Some things they haven't done in the game. Very successful and a much needed drive for that Duke Blue Devil offense. Redshirt sophomore Austin Parker on. And he bangs it through. It's 21 to 10. So Jones carried four times on that drive, Jay, for 26 yards. And he capped it off right here with a four yard run. And Duke, the touchdown to make it 21 10 Army. Inside of four minutes to play until halftime here at Mikey Stadium. Veterans Day and it's senior day for Army, their final home game in 2017, trying to go 6 0 at home here. They lead 21 to 10 on a beautiful West Point Saturday. Coming up on the Ram Halftime Report, Adam Zucker, Rick Neuheisel, and Brian Jones will get you caught up on all the action in college football. We'll have a preview of number one Georgia and 10th ranked Auburn. That one at 3.30 Eastern on CBS. It's all coming up on the Ram Halftime Report. That one will be good. This one's good. Walker back deep. And a 38-yard kick return to begin the game. Duke will... Get the ball to begin the third quarter. They deferred on the toss. Walker gets out over the 15 to the 16 where he's dropped there down to Tina with an update on Duke. Tina. Well, Ben, I was on the Duke sideline when they scored that touchdown. Definitely a sigh of relief for a lot of these players because it was tense here for a while. And then Daniel Jones waited for Julian Santos's left guard to come back off the field after the extra point. He spent a little extra time talking to Santos, thanking him, shaking his hand, giving him that nod of uh, appreciation for what he did during that drive. Yeah, he helped him big time. Jones was also 4 of 4 on that drive for 35 yards. He capped it. An 86-yard drive with a four-yard touchdown run. I think Zach Roper, their offensive coordinator, helped him a lot. Got the tight end the ball, some different calls. It was an excellent drive. Got him in rhythm. Here's Bradshaw. What can Army do in the late stages of this first half? Bradshaw takes it over the 20-yard line to the 21. Second down coming up, gain of five. And when we got a chance, want to tell you that Armed Forces football probably supported by Golden Corral. That was Army's version of the counter. You know, a lot of times you see a counter with the running back, and he starts one way, and then he bows it back. Army fakes one way, and then Bradshaw keeps it going back. We've seen that play all year. Very successful. They don't run it a lot. You're trying to catch the defense over pursuing. Second and five. Davidson back in. Davidson blocked a punt that led to the 25-yard return by Boudreaux. Three for 34 on... One of Army's scoring drives, third and a yard here with 3.09 to play. Duke takes timeout. Yeah, I think it's an interesting, interesting decision to take a timeout there. Third and one, Army's so good, third and short. We'll see if it ends up biting Duke.
309 to play in quarter two, a third and a yard upcoming for Army. While we got a chance, it's time for our view of the core. Brought to you by MCOR. And filed in 4,400 attend West Point. Exception of the football players, all the cadets in there. So tip of the cap to those folks, men and women that attend West Point, serve our country. Well, I thought it was an interesting decision to call timeout by Duke. Army 32 of 32, converting third and two or shorter on the season. So I thought you would have waited until after this play to call a timeout. Yeah, they had a third and one earlier in the game. Bradshaw got a push from Andy Davidson. So Davidson doing it all. He's carrying the rock. He's blocking punts. He's shoving the quarterback. Same play they ran on the yeah. last third and one. So now Army, who doesn't score quickly, you gave him a free timeout. You saved him 40 seconds by calling that timeout. And now if you want, you can be aggressive here trying to get down the field. Army's got three timeouts. Going into the win, Blake Wilson's long for his career is 47. They got to get to about the 30-yard line to try a field goal. Jeffy Jackham has come in. They'll split him out wide to the top. Bradshaw, eight carries for 48 yards and a touchdown on the ground. Bradshaw's got it. Faked the pitch, kept it, and taken down near the 32-yard line by Jeremy McDuffie. You can see the fewest negative yardage plays in the country, Missouri and then Army, all part of Jeff Munkin's plan to eliminate mistakes, get rid of the sacks, get rid of the fumbles. That's what they've done such a phenomenal job. Only three fumbles on the year, only lost two. Darnell Wolfolk has checked in. They hand off to him, and they're going to have another one of those situations, Jay. They take it to the 35. As Kobe Kwanzaa made the tackle, it's going to be third and two here for the Black Knights. They don't appear to be in much of a hurry. No, and I wouldn't expect them to be. It's 21 yeah. to 10. They played well. If you break a big one, fine. Then you can go be in a hurry. But I think they're content to just kind of keep grinding away here. Duke deciding to not use their timeouts. Third and two. Out of the shotgun, and they're going to get the job done. That Duke defense, they'll certainly use one here. And leading the charge was Edgar Serenord with a minute 23 to go as Duke takes its second time out. So that Blue Devil defense flexing its muscle. 1.23 to go, fourth down, and we return to Mikey Stadium. Army on top 11. It's a beautiful West Point Saturday. Army on top late in the second quarter, 21 to 10 here at Mikey Stadium. Fourth down upcoming for the Black Knights. Before we get to that, Monday night, 6 Eastern, our roster of former pro quarterbacks will break down week seven in the NFL. Get you inside the minds of the most important position in football. It's NFL Monday QB delivered by FedEx only on CBS Sports Network. Schrag's on to punt it. He's had a great year this year. 45.2 average for Schrag. One of the guys that's most improved on this Army team. And that fake punt against Buffalo earlier this year. On the run, Ramming's back there, and he wants to get his mitts on it, trying to make a play. He's explosive. And Army, though, does a great job. Ackerman down there. How about the senior on senior day? That's a 265-pound man down there, running down T.J. Ramming, and there's an injured Army player there. That's Aukerman, slow to get up. The Duke trainer out first, just because he's right there near their sideline to check on Alex Aukerman. This would be an enormous loss. Sure. For this defense, if you lost Alex Aukerman. There's his career and. Tina said it, talked about him in the open, and he's trying to get up. And he came here as a 205-pound safety and has turned into a terrific player. Here we look back, Jay. Number 21 right there oh. in the middle. He hits his neck, gets bowed back. Friendly fire. As he came in there, he is up and walking off. That's good. That's a really good sign. Hit his own guy right there in yeah. the face. That standing young man came they, in as a safety. He was 205 yeah. pounds. He's 265 now. Now that was so interesting. Jay Bateman said, you know, P 
people don't think of him as a pro prospect. Uh, I talked to a couple of scouts who were down on the field and they were watching him when he lined up last year against Temple and it really is coming out game against their right tackle who's now starting for the Buffalo Bills dominated him huh. yeah. against the tight end for Ohio State this year everybody thinks so I have had an awesome game against him so he's doing it against some of the best competition 106 to go Duke with a timeout left trying to get a touchdown here down 11 late in the second quarter Jones very good on the last drive dumps it off this is Wilson Wilson good pick up Nautical force him out stops the clock with a minute to go so Jones now 13 out of 16. North of 125 left. Minute remaining, a timeout to go as I mentioned. Jones taking a shot down the sideline, intercepted! Intercepted by Elijah Riley! That right there is a big-time defensive play from Riley. David Cutcliffe told us one of the things that Daniel Jones has struggled with, decision-making. He didn't need to take the shot there. There's 52 seconds left. You got a timeout. Riley had it covered, took the shot anyways. And why did Jay Bateman, why did he want Riley back so much? Right here is the play going up, elevating, making the interception. So they decided to play without us we missed one play there so just a short run there for army <laughs> they wanted to hurry up and get out there get a short run and exactly go to halftime. there's riley made that big interception and army's not going to do anything with it here they're going to let this time wind down as much as they can they only got to run one more play and there's jones who threw the pick riley with a beautiful interception to deny the blue devils going down try to get to a four point deficit at best they don't do that, Bradshaw. This should be the final play of the first half. And it will be. And Army on top 11. Duke will get the ball to begin the second half. Andy Davidson, Jay, what a half for him. Running the ball well. Gets the huge block punt that Boudreaux took back for a touchdown. And then blocking for Ahmad Bradshaw, either in front of him or behind him, pushing him for first downs. Big half from Army. Final home game for these seniors here on Veterans Day against Duke. Always a great scene here at West Point. That's the end of the first half of the score, 21-10 Army. Glad to have you with us. You're watching College Football on CBS Sports Network. Halftime here at Mikey Stadium. Army on top by 11. Black Knights were up by as many as 18, but a big punt block here, Jay, led to a touchdown return of 25 yards. Their fullback, Andy Davison, right in the middle. You see him come right up the middle. Two guys for Duke to block one guy. They can't do it. He gets the block. Javari Bordeaux takes it back to match the uniform number. <laughs> That's right. More of halftime in the second half when we return to West Point. Back here at Mikey Stadium, Duke will get the ball when the second half begins momentarily. Army's on top by a score of 21 to 10. Great to see you and be with you alongside my broadcast partner, Jay Feely. Tina Servacio is on the field with us. Pleasure and honor to be with you. My name is Ben Holden. Jay, first half, Army gets out of there with a 11-point lead as we're set to begin the third. Yeah, the big play was the punt block by Andy Davidson. Turned this game. You know, Duke came back. The two turnovers, that's what really killed them. We said at the Open, can't have turnovers. If you have better athletes, you have to not make mistakes. They made some mistakes. That's why they're behind. Indeed the case. Time now to take a look at our statistics, our stats from the first half, and it's brought to us today by Stouffer's Fit Kitchen Bowls. You know, for Army, making that one completion, you get two or three completions, you know, right there, one completion, 42 yards. That changes everything that a defense can do against you. Big play for Ahmad Bradshaw. And, and Duke threw the ball well. Jones just can't make the big mistake. Had an opportunity to score before the half, throws the interception, fumbled a ball when they were doing a, a run pass option. Wasn't definitive, so two big mistakes by Daniel Jones. That's the difference in this game. Wilson's got it teed up. Or I beg your pardon, Schrag's got it teed up. 
Blake Wilson, their place kicker, Schrag, handles the punting and the kickoffs. Saw Sean Wilson back there. Army trying to close out the home portion of their season undefeated. They haven't done that since 1996. Trying to go 6-0 at home. The third quarter is underway on a beautiful West Point Saturday. Wilson from the goal line. He's got wheels, cuts back in, look at him go. What a return, he's dropped a heavy hit, but a big time return. Aaron Jones wiped him out, but Wilson gives Duke great field position. Big return for Wilson as he comes out here. They bounces it, and Army, you can't allow him to get outside. You have to have contain. He gets outside. That's exactly what you need for Duke. They were lucky Army was that that wasn't a touchdown. They certainly were a 43-yard return. What Duke has done in their second half possessions, their first possessions, you saw that on the eye bar. So another bit of a bobble there by Jones. He gave it off to Britton Brown. And Brown with a good pickup on first down, about five down to Tina Servasio, who had a chance to talk with both coaches. Tina. Yes, when I talked to Army head coach Jeff Munkin, of course, that block punch is a game changer. Gave them the breathing room they need because Munkin feels they are not running the ball well. I'll get back to what Duke said after this play, Ben. Good. Very good. We'll get right back down to you, Tina. Gain of four on that run by Brown. Just shy of the midfield mark. Jones looking to throw, going to take a shot. Got a man, one of those tight ends. Knocked away over the top by Gibson. Beautiful play. They look to Helm. Tina, what did David Cutcliffe have to say? Late flag, late flag. There is a flag. Trey Blake coming over. That was thrown well after the play. Was. So the penalty against Army for taunting. Had to have been on James Gibson. Yeah. Gibson's the one who makes this play. Excellent play by Gibson. Comes up, knocks it away. And it's way late here. So when he gets when he gets up, because he looks at him and gets him in his face, that's a ticky tacky call. Yeah. You don't know if he said anything. We couldn't hear it. So Jones and the offense, they go back to work. Hands it off. This is Britton Brown. Heavy hitting going on. Nautical wraps him up. Now we go back down to Tina Servacio for the words from David Cutcliffe. Tina, what did he tell you? Yeah, Coach Cutcliffe said they shot themselves in the foot with those miscues in the first half, the two turnovers, the blocked punt. This could be a much closer game. They could have the lead. Second half, he said, offensively, we just need to use the field. That is when we gain a lot of ground and put ourselves in a better position. Ben? Thanks so much, Tina. Keep our eyes on that. David Cutcliffe, three and one all time against Army. Here's Jones, the run pass option. He kept it there. And he's double teamed. And Brinson among those down there. He got help from Elijah Riley, who had the big pick late in the first half against Jones. Jay Bateman's defense trying to stiffen here on third and short. They need a yard. You would think from here they'd be in two down territory if they can't convert this. I always find it interesting when you're third and one, you don't go under center. So many spread option teams, that's what they do. Duke three of five. They fake the jet sweep and a tough run there by Daniel Jones. Took some shots. Raymond Wright getting in there along with Cole Christensen to make the stop for Army, but it's a first down for Duke. 6'5", 215 pounds. Daniel Jones, big, strong, tough quarterback. Added 15 pounds since 2016 to get bigger so he can survive those hits that quarterbacks take. Anytime you're on the RPO, the run pass option, your quarterbacks are going to take a lot of hits. Duke with 16 first down to Army's eight. And they get it down to the 25. Pickup of three on the run there. Aukerman the stop. He was dinged up late in the first half, but a Walked off and obviously doing all right out there making plays. 14 Army seniors were honored prior to the game today. Superintendent of West Point, 
Lieutenant General Bob Caslin went through the line, shook the hands, hugged every one of those players and their families. What they've done to help turn this program around. Jones got rid of it, and England put the heat on him, Jay, and it's incomplete. Good job defensively by Army, recognizing what they're trying to do on offense. They were looking down the middle to Daniel Copenhaver, number 81, the tight end, ran a corner out, covered well. Jones had nowhere else to go with the ball. Third and eight, Duke four of six. They need the 17 to convert it. Jones, Blitz coming, they got him! Riley, and then Wright helped finish him off! Elijah Riley, like he was shot out of a cannon there. Loss of five. How big a difference has Riley been for this defense? You can see him coming around right here quickly Ooh. into your screen, gets the sack. You're on the verge of field goal range here. It'd be a 47-yarder. The kickers for Duke had a tough time going this way. The field goal they made barely made it, and it was a short field goal in the first quarter. Yeah, so they... you're in this in-between. Do we punt? Well, we don't really want to punt. It's fourth and 14. They're going for it. They're 9 of 16 on fourth downs this season on the Blue Devils. They need the 17-yard line. Jones steps up, fires into the ground. Christensen got in front of the intended target there. That was the tight end they were looking for. Daniel Helm, turnover on downs. Bateman's D flexing their muscles. And I don't like this throw by Daniel Jones. He gets pressure in his face. You have a tight end. Throw it up in the air and allow him to make a play. You throw it short underneath. Army gets the stop. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Ram Trucks. Proven to last. By Navy Federal Credit Union. Proudly serving the armed forces and their families for over 80 years. Federally insured by NCUA. And by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Those are the three Army Heisman Trophy winners. Felix Doc Blanchard, Mr. Inside. And you also had Glenn Davis and the last guy there. Looks like he can still play, Feely. Pete Dawkins. Love having him up here in the booth with us. We've done that a bunch. You know, it's an interesting decision by Duke not to kick the field goal. They're at the 30-yard line. It would have been a 47-yard field goal if they had Ross Martin, their great kicker from a few years ago. They certainly would have kicked that field goal. Austin Parker, 12-16 on the year, long of 45. Decided not to do it, and Army gets a big stop. So Bradshaw on the offense back on. You see what Army's done there on the eye bar. Their first possession of the second half this season. Tough sledding, but Ahmad Bradshaw did a good job to lean forward and get close to the 35-yard line there on that run. Tackle made by Kobe Kwanzaa. Well, we got a chance. Want to let you know Armed Forces football is proudly sponsored by USAA. The thing that Ahmad Bradshaw has done the best job with this year is protecting the football. He's yeah. become a master at understanding the triple option, being solid in his decision making, getting the team in the right play, and then not turning the ball over, only fumbling two times. That's six on that play. Up the gut goes Army. They're going to give him, well, are they or not? I think he's got it based on the spot. Wolfolk with a carry. They indeed did get it. They moved the sticks. Kobe Kwanzaa on the tackle there. So the ball at the 41 yard line. Darnell Wolfolk injured that game in Ohio State. And really, you think about it, Jay Army, the two lane game, the one they really would like to have, they'd be sitting at 8 and 1. They were really beat up after that Ohio yeah. State game. Ryan England was out. Wolfolk was beat up. And then they gave up three fourth down conversions on the last drive. Yeah, they did. Wolfolk five for 20 prior to this carry. And another good pickup. It's exactly what Davis wants on first down. You get four, five, you stay on schedule. Top rushing team in the country in terms of per game average and total yardage coming into the game. Again, a four there. 
for Darnell, Darnell Wolfolk, easy for me to say. They only ran for 119 <laughs> yards in that first half. Army did. They had the, the block punt. They had a nice conversion, 42-yard completion by Ahmad Bradshaw. Andy Davidson checks in to give Wolfolk a blow at the fullback spot. They fake to him. Ahmad Bradshaw going nowhere. He thought he was, but... Stopped there, a good, good little pickup. Saxton got him down low to bring up a third and short. It was very close to a huge play by yeah. Ahmad Bradshaw. If he goes outside there, he kind of was inside, and he hits that hole. As he was coming around the corner, I thought he was gone. Mr. Inside, Mr. Outside? <laughs> That's right. He chose the wrong one on that one. Connor Slumka there, number 25. He's now in at fullback. Army three of five on third down. Slumka, he's going to be stopped. Good push up front by Duke. And they're going to need a yard, so it's fourth and a, and a yard. And they're going to go for it. Yeah, There's sure no they question are. in my mind. This is the new Army football. And what they did in the offseason, really starting last year, they went to analytics and decided we're going to be more aggressive on fourth down. Brent Davis, the offensive coordinator, knew on third down if he didn't get it, he'd have fourth down. That allows them to be more aggressive. They, the last two times they've had third and one, they've ran Bradshaw on a keeper. Right now you got Wolfolk in the game. He's likely going to get it. And then again, maybe he won't. They give it to Trainer. He got it. The senior John Trainer gets it. So they use Wolfolk as a decoy, and John Trainer, the senior, picks it up, Jay. Has not had a lot of opportunities this year. Give him a different look. Give him something the defense isn't ready for and get outside. Trainer picks up the first down. There's Brent Davis being aggressive again yeah. on fourth down. Miles Hudzik, the redshirt freshman, forced him out, but Army continues the drive. We're already halfway through this third quarter. Duke was stopped on their opening possession on fourth and long. Army with three sacks defensively today. Bradshaw, late pitch, and Duke was ready for that. Jordan Asbury with his first carry of the day. Second down upcoming, and we look back, Jay, the touchdowns for Army today. Wolfolk cashing it in early, and then here's Davidson just running right through two blockers. Hitting the block punt. Bordeaux takes it back 25. This is what we're used to. Bob Bradshaw keeping it, getting a couple big blocks. Cashing in for the touchdown. That's what the Black Knights have done offensively and on the special team side. Touchdowns, Bradshaw just got rid of it, balled out of the deck. And they're gonna, there's a flag on the play. They're gonna rule this. It went forward, so it's like a shovel pass, yeah. even though Bradshaw was pitching it. These are the things he hasn't done this year. Take yeah. those chances yep. with the ball. They might call intentional grounding. Here's After Blake. The play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense number 44. 15 yard penalty, first down. So that's on Giles Harris. Let's see if it's forward or not, Jay. Here's Bradshaw coming down the line. I don't think it I don't was either. forward. I don't either. I think it was right on the line. Yeah, and I, they might look at this. They might. They are coming over down below us. Out of your picture is Trey Blake. First year in the ACC is going to put the headset on with the communicator, Steve Fredrickson. This was the penalty that they called. He gets rid of it. So he's not down. And then because he takes him to the ground here, But this is a big decision right here. Was this ball clearly going forward? Did it go backwards? Tough to see on that angle. That overhead look was the best one. This one this here. This is the one, right? Yeah, this is the best look. So here he is. That's right where he is right there. So he's at the 48-yard line. 48, and where does he touch this He's ball? behind it. I think so. Here it is. He's touching oh, yeah. it. Looks like 48 or 47 and a half. And a half. Yeah. So that would be a fumble. Trey Blake on the headset. The, there was a clear recovery by Duke. Yes. The replay official today is Joe Ryder. Blake, the referee, on the headset with the communicator, Steve Fredrickson. We look again. I thought it was a really interesting thing that Brent Davis said to us. 
when we talked about decision making and what has made Ahmad Bradshaw good at not turning the ball over. He said we have to preserve the right to punt sometimes. I like that. They've been so good on third and fourth down. He only has two fumbles on the year. And that's so key to their offense. When you're running the triple option and you're running the ball continuously, getting ahead in the sticks, not turning the ball over, not having penalties where they've been excellent this year as well. So the call on the field was an incomplete pass. Both of us think it was backwards, so I, I, that would be a fumble. I mean, I heard David Cutcliffe say it in his press conference earlier in the week. He said the tape doesn't lie, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so they, they had a couple of plays throughout the year where they the, did. The tape didn't show or showed what wasn't called on the field. The tape didn't lie, but well, it, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> they are all judgment yeah. calls, that's for sure. So it's a tough do job these officials it have. It is. It is. ACC crew. They're always ACC crews here at Army. So happens today, David Cutcliffe on the right, his team in the ACC, of course. So they continue to discuss this. I mean, it looked to, to you and I, Jay, and I think anyone else watching, that that ball came out at the 48. It was in the hands of the back at the 47 and a half, right? Exactly, that's yeah. what I saw as well. Me too. A clear recovery by Duke. They called on the field an incomplete pass. That ball would have to be going forward for it to be incomplete. Correct. After the play, there was a penalty on yep. Duke. On Giles Harris. So Munkin pacing the sidelines, and David Cutcliffe calmly talking with one of the officials. The verdict coming here from Trey Blake. Here it is. After review, the pass was backwards. There was a clear recovery by the defense. It will be Duke's ball, first down at a 33-yard line. Timeout. So there you go. So Duke will have it. They overturned the call. 6.22 to go in this third. Duke's got the football, and we come back to West Point. Only 28 days to go in the countdown to America's game, the Army-Navy game presented by USAA on CBS Sports. The winner between Army and Navy will win the CIC this season, and Army has not won that since 1996. A lot of things we're referencing go back to that great 96 team. And they're the last team to win the CIC. They've already beaten Air Force. Now they got to beat Navy. <laughs> That's right. They yeah. did it last year. Number one goal on their list, win the CIC. It is Sean Wilson. In the backfield. So the penalty that happened after the play was yep. still in force. That's why the ball is back at the 33. That's exactly right. 6.22 to play in the third. Jones, a play fake. Pressure, got rid of it in time. Catch is made. And they're going to give him the first down. They're going to give him about 11 and a half on it. Aaron Young with another catch. He's had a couple today. Nice strike by Daniel Jones. Yeah. Standing in there, know you're going to get hit. Jay Bateman was bringing pressure, stepped up and delivered a good pass. First down to 44. Jones, 14 out of 21. The two big plays were the fumble and the interception. Young, two grabs for 21. Ramming goes in motion. They fake to him. Good play call there. I like that call. Down to the 49 of Army as they use ramming as the decoy Aukerman on the fake up. jet sweep. And Aukerman made the tackle. Pick up a seven. Kenneth Brinson knocked down a pass in the first half. Wilson going nowhere, lost a yard. Wunmi Oyatuga leading the charge up front. Third and four coming up, Jay. Up front, they've done a good job. Oyatuga and Raymond Wright, 77, have been in the backfield throughout the game. Good, good pressure up the middle. Oyatuga with the stop there. Saw that Duke offensive line. Huge advantage, but Army plays with that aggression and that speed. Duke's four of seven on third down. 
They need the Army 46. Mismatch right there. They look the other way. Jones fires in space. Catch is made once again. It is Aaron Young with his third catch of the day, and the Blue Devils move the chains. First down. Had, had ramming on Brinson. That's what I was pointing yeah. out. It's a good completion. I would have looked the other way. I think you could have had a big play with ramming on Brinson. That's a mismatch. Not what Army wants to see. Gain of eight there. Young, the redshirt sophomore out of California. Handoff. Wilson. Able to work his way for about three. Raymond Wright. In there on the tackle. Junior out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Not far from where Cutcliffe and his guys call home in Durham. He's in the low 50s. Ran into a couple of their guys at halftime. Set up. So you guys brought the cold weather, huh? They're fine with it. Second down. Wilson's the back. Jones fakes to him. A little slant there to Lloyd, and it's incomplete. Hawkerman in there. Riley in there as well. Third and seven coming up. Ryan England got in there and broke it up. Here's England, number eight. Yeah. Such a difference maker for that defense when Max Regan had to play a lot of plays in the middle of the field. England comes in. He's the quarterback of the defense, so smart. Understands Jay Bateman's defense. Big play here for Duke. Third and seven. Jones, 15 out of 22, make it 16 out of 23, but they're going to be short. Excellent job, Lloyd the catch, but a better play by Gibby Gibson. I'm sure they're going to go for it here. They went for it on fourth and 13 from the 30. Army got the stop. Fourth and four. They need the 29-yard line. This crowd alive at Mikey. Sellout crowd today. I like ramming right there in the slot. Give him a little two-way go. Pressure, Jones got rid of it, fires! It's going to depend on the spot. It's really close. Lloyd was the one that made the catch. It's going to, they're going to measure this for certain. And if you're Lloyd, you have to make sure. No, they're not. They, they gave it, it to him. I'm surprised they, were, they didn't measure it. So they am won. I. And so is the crowd. <laughs> Listen so to the him. Army sideline. They weren't <laughs> happy about that either. Wow. It is right on the hash there so you know exactly where it is you can look to the sideline so they say first down on the pitch and catch from Jones to Lloyd drive continues for Duke Jones wants to throw again got plenty of time fires incomplete flag on the play ramming got tackled it's gonna be pass interference yep they were I think they're gonna call defensive holding they held him earlier and they didn't throw the flag and then they threw it late Here from our referee Trey Blake momentarily. Holding defense number eight, 10 yard penalty, first down. Here's Ryan England right here. Riley's on him there. They called England. That's the second time they've called a penalty on him, and it hasn't been on <laughs> yeah, him. Yeah, <laughs> but it was Riley who made the. Duke back to it. Jones, the keeper, to the 15-yard line. Aukerman, the stop. Each team with three penalties. Duke, three for 30. Army, three for 34. Second and six. Forthcoming gain of four. Twenty-one ten, late in this third quarter. See what it, that Duke offense has done in the red zone today. Jones going to run it, got tripped up, kept his balance. It's going to bring up a third and very short for Duke. Nautical got him. Let's see how this third quarter is quickly. She goes quick. Running away. <laughs> the possessions are precious. That's why you have to take advantage of your Duke. You got to get in the end zone here. Duke five of nine on third down. 11th play of the drive. Jones keeps it. He's got the first down. It'll be first and goal for the Blue Devils from the six yard line. Christensen made the stop, but not before they move the chains. 
first and goal. I mentioned it in the first half, Duke only 39% in the red zone scoring touchdowns. You look at Army, on the other hand, they're 82% in yeah. the red zone scoring touchdowns. It's been a struggle for Duke. They got ramming all the way out wide, one on one. Wilson in the backfield. They fake it. Jones is going to take this, and he's stopped. He's stopped by Riley. Big play from Elijah Riley there to stop him short of the goal line. A gain of five, second and goal upcoming. Gone away from Wilson running the ball and been allowing Jones to keep it. Thought he was going to score, and a good job coming up, getting a stop. Second and goal now. 12 plays. Got a tight end in the backfield with Jones. They fake it. Jones didn't get there. Nautical in there. Ackerman in there. The senior Ackerman. So third and goal. Time ticking away, as Jay mentioned a moment ago. And Final play of the third quarter, and we are headed to the fourth. Seven and two Army on top of four and five Duke. 21 to 10. Cutcliffe's guys trying to punch one in. We'll see if they can do it when we come back. Set to begin the fourth quarter with Jay Feely, Tina Servasio on the field. My name is Ben Holden, and Army under Jeff Munkin when leading after three. How about those numbers? That's one of their goals as well, win the fourth quarter. That's their third goal, their second goal. Undefeated at home. They got to close out this fourth quarter to do it. Duke sitting at the one-yard line trying to bring this game within a score. They are. Third and goal for Duke. Crowd alive. 38,851 at Mikey today. Britton Brown's a deep back. Ramming in motion. Brown gets it! Touchdown! Duke powers its way in. Brown takes it in. And the Blue Devils cash in. Another well-executed drive for their offense. It's a five-point game. Four seconds into the fourth quarter. Excellent drive by Duke, a much needed drive. Had to get back in this game, had to get into the end zone. We talked about the red zone struggles, powered it in. Really important touchdown for Duke. That's Brandner, their left tackle, making his way off the field. So Duke's going to line up here and go for two. Down five, trying yeah. to cut it to three. Duke is going for two. Make it a field goal game if they can get the two-point conversion. Their first attempt this season. Wilson in motion. Jones keeps it, doesn't get it! Second time this season, Army in this end of the field has stopped a two-point attempt. Ball came out late. It Whistled did. It dead. His forward progress had stopped. Austin Davis, the center, thought he took it in but no so the army defense Brinson and company they stand and deny Duke the two point conversion this is what started it all for Duke rare fumble and poor decision for Ahmad Bradshaw and Duke turns it into a touchdown Time now to check in with our Chick-fil-A fan cam, see what the fans are cooking. Go Duke! Beat Army! Woo! Go Army! Beat Duke! Go Army! Beat Duke! Go Army! Beat Duke! Go Army! Beat Duke! And how they're celebrating. 21-16 after the short touchdown run by Britton Brown. Army will get the ball back here. Four seconds into the fourth quarter. So you were talking about earlier, Jay, that picture that's in the one of their meeting rooms where we meet with the team every week. They're in their 10th game. Every goal is attainable right now. Walker lets it hop at the 10, takes it 
at the five. 38 yard return to start the game for Kel Walker. Not that far this time. And it's time now to get a look at our eye on college football brought to you by Chase Sapphire Reserve. 28 days until Army Navy. Big one down on the south. Georgia, Auburn. That's Who you like? Go a long way. I like Georgia. I'm taking Auburn. They're at home. All right. Yeah. Loser hey, buys a coffee. Done. <laughs> but and that's a cool story. UAB. UAB, it is. Program was canceled. They're back now. Yeah, players all over the country. Right, a lot of guys left. Yeah. It's really good to see for them. So how about this? Duke has held Army to 141 on the ground to this point. The top rushing team in the nation. It's not like Duke's not experienced with this. They play Georgia Tech every year. Navy as Navy well. Navy a lot. They play on their schedule along with Army over the years. 2-1 and one against Georgia Tech the last three years. 3-0 three and oh against Navy. 3-1 and one against Army under David Cutcliffe. A lot of success against the triple option. Army had just 22 yards in the third quarter. Come on, Bradshaw, the senior. 18-yard touchdown run in the first half. Gave it off there to Darnell Woolfolk. And he gets it to the 30-yard line. It'll bring up a third and a couple. Kobe Kwanzaa was in there. He's yeah. had a monster game, 11 tackles. Only came in with 19 tackles on the year. But we knew switching from the 4-2-5 to the 4-3-4 that Kwanzaa would play more. Jordan Hayes wouldn't play quite as much. And he has rewarded his coaches getting in there playing tough physical football. Back in his neck of the woods from Connecticut, back in the tri-state area. Third and two for Army. Wolfolk the back, and he plows his way ahead. That's what Darnell Wolfolk does. Edgar Serenard the tackle, but it's not in time. First down, Army. Army would love nothing more than three or four of these kind of drives. Plays. Here you yep. go, third down, convert it. Clock keeps ticking. They want two, three plays, convert a first down. Two, three plays, convert a, convert a first down. That's what they did against Air Force. Eat up the clock. That not game allowed, was not allowed Duke to get back in the game. Sorry, Jay. That game was over in about 220, wasn't it? <laughs> We're on pace for here. It was fast. <laughs> Army 11 first downs. Duke with 21. Bradshaw, Bradshaw the run Harry. there for about three. Let's get down to Tina for an update. Ben, Joe Giles, Harris, Ben Humphreys, when they're on the sidelines, they're always next to each other. On the field right now, and Duke defensive coordinator Jim Knowles calls them an old married couple. They're roommates, they're best friends, they are complete opposite personalities. In fact, what happens is Coach Knowles calls Giles Harris a grump, by the way. He says that he'll, if Giles Harris makes a mistake, Knowles will yell at Humphreys, and then Humphreys will go and talk to Giles Harris about it, because Humphreys, he's the vocal guy. That is funny. That was fun hearing him talk about that yesterday as Davidson takes it. It's got the first down to the 45. It looks he does. Yeah, Jim Knowles said that Joe Giles Harris doesn't smile before 11 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> Gain of seven from Davidson. It's great to have, Ben, those two guys at that yeah. inside linebacker positions, Mike and Will linebackers that are so close. So much nonverbal communication goes on when you have two guys that are best friends, roommates, they live together, they talk about football all the time. They need him to step up and make some plays here and get a stop. First and 10 for Army. Walker in motion. Bradshaw keeps. Good job by Ahmad Bradshaw there. Looked like they were going to get him, but he found a way to slither through there. McDuffie made the tackle on him. Looked like they were going to get him behind the it line. Did. Bradshaw ran through about three tackles there. Nice physical, hard running, and that's what we've come to see in Ahmad Bradshaw to expect. Today's first down line being brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. Bradshaw 16 for 76 and a touch. One for one for 42 yards. Hasn't thrown. Attempted a pass again since that completion to Kel Walker. Yeah. Andy Davidson's in there. Andy Davidson's got the first down. Plows his way through there. Giles Harris the tackle, but Davidson sifting through the trash, as one might say, to find the hole to get through there. He had such a big year last year, 961 yards, 
12 touchdowns, averaged over five yards a carry. A lot of that in the first half of the season. Then he got injured. Seven career 100 yard games for Davidson. This will be the ninth play of the drive coming up for Army. And get it to the 38 yard line and good pick up there. Second down upcoming and defending the post, Jay. This is what Army's done at home this season, trying to cap it off perfect with a win here today if they can do it. All three of those tough, close games that came down to the end. Schrag against Buffalo had the fake punt. Eastern Michigan had the excellent stop on the two point conversion. Yeah. And then the overtime game against Temple. They, they who says they don't throw? <laughs> Calvin Hopkins came in and orchestrated a drive with about 100 seconds left and found Jermaine Adams. They won an overtime. Ahmad Bradshaw. Jay, he's just got that look about him today. Just watching him up here in the booth of determination. He's on such a mission here. Here in his senior season. First down run, gain of six. And that is a first down. Locked down to nine and a half to play in the game. Army up by five. He's over 2,500 yards rushing for his career. You know, here at Army, 21 rushing touchdowns. Just climbing his way up that. He's going to break. He's getting really close. He's going to break the all-time rushing record for a season here at Army. He's about 150 yards away from that. Move past the likes of Larry Dixon, not too far removed from the program in recent weeks. Davidson. Mike Ramsey, one of their big defensive tackles. Good story he is. Didn't get many looks, but Duke wanted him, and he found a way to be a part of their program and their school. Team captain, true leader, really elevated his game this year. What I love about Ahmad Bradshaw is he doesn't care about numbers. He doesn't care if he never throws the ball. A lot of quarterbacks would be upset sure. about that. All he cares about is wins, and he wants to give his offensive line credit when he does well. Just a very sacrificial leader. Wolfolk in the backfield with him. Bradshaw again. He took one heck of a shot from Joe Giles Harris, who's not the only Giles Harris at Duke. His brother JT, an outstanding defenseman, there's a flag on the play on John Donowski's lacrosse team. Brett Toth there talking to one of the officials. There's Giles Harris. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense number 44, 15 yard penalty, first down. It's the second penalty they've called on him. It's a huge penalty. You come in, you make a big stop. We could hear that hit all the way up here. Yes. And then you get a dumb penalty. David Cutcliffe told us we cannot beat ourselves. Yep. Penalties, turnovers, those are the things that beat yourselves. Army doesn't beat themselves. They become so disciplined. There's the big hit. And I think it's right here. He just kind of has his hand on his neck as he's getting up, and that's what they call. And this crew has called it tight on both sides. Yeah. Look, I know it's football, it's aggressive, but you got to be disciplined in those situations. Army in the red zone. Duke down by five. Army trying to extend the lead. Wolfolk! Big tough run out of Darnell Wolfolk. Stopped by Alonzo Sexton, the second. That's a huge pickup on first down, Jay. The ability to bring in different fullbacks is such an advantage for Army, something they haven't had in years past. Over 1,300 yards, 15 touchdowns, production from that fullback position. You see Davidson running well. Then you bring both folks running well. You can bring Slump or Holt in. It allows them to be fresh. It allows them to be healthy. And it's a huge key to this triple option offense. And Duke needs a stop right now. See if they get it. Second and three for Bradshaw. Bradshaw. It said it appears they did get the stop. They needed to get to the three. It's like they're about a yard short. Trey Hornbuckle and Ben Humphreys on the tackle. We knew all along this game was going to come down to third and short. Yep. That's what you have here. For Duke, they got to stop them. Army's been so good all year converting third and short. 
From the beginning of the game, we knew these are the kind of plays that were going to decide this game. Davidson behind Bradshaw. Third and yard. They push forward. Davidson, second time he's done that. The push, third time he's done that. Pushed him forward, first and goal, Army. Get a big, strong, powerful fullback coming right up behind your quarterback and just driving him forward. The push from the offensive line. And once again, Army converts a third and one. I think a lot of people think back to that Southern Cal Notre Dame game. Reggie Bush, the, the <laughs> sure. push, push. Really the first time it, I think, became part of pop culture in football anyways. Seeing that done, and Army does it well. So first and goal to three here. And look at the time, just running away, running away. If you get in the end zone now, make it really hard. Yep, they're going to back up. They ran out of time. Delay of game. Offense, five-yard penalty, first down. So it'll be first and goal from the eight now. That's a big error and something Jeff Munkin has preached, discipline. They're only averaged four penalties per game this year. That's 10th best in the country. And that's his whole mantra. Don't turn the ball over. Don't have penalties. Don't have negative plays and run the ball. Clock winds uh, coming up on Six minutes to play in the game. Army's used over eight and a half minutes. Bradshaw gave it off to Darnell Wolfel. He gets it back down to the four yard line. So second and goal upcoming. Mike Ramsey to stop. All the times the fullbacks have touched the ball, they haven't fumbled the ball one time this year. That's just stunning. It is. Considering. Going back the years we've been here, you and I together for three, it, it's, it was a it was a house of horrors at times. 35 fumbles, 37 fumbles the last couple of years. Mike Vitti, the fullback coach. And they got a lot to do with that. Army's gonna back up again here, Jay. So another penalty, a false start. False start. Offense, number 85. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Tight end Quentin Parker. You know, if you don't get in the end zone here, you see Quinn Parker right at the top of your screen. If you don't get in the end zone here and you kick a field goal, it's only an eight-point right. lead, and that allows Duke to be able to go down and score a touchdown, two-point conversion to tie it. So it's critical for Army to get in the end zone and for Duke to keep him out. Army, two big penalties hurting themselves on this drive. Five Army penalties for 44 yards. Duke, four for 43. Second and goal. They're backing up. They were at the three, now they're at the ten. Bradshaw, Walker, wide. got away, can't get away the second time. Giles Harris on his back to take him out. Third and goal upcoming now after a gain of four. Kel Walker has been a revelation for this team offensively, giving them a playmaker that they haven't had. He looked like a nice little move to pick up an extra five yards, keep the clock moving. 556 yards, 7.8 per carry, six touchdowns, had a really good year. A couple of touchdowns against Air Force last week. You ready for this? This will be the 17th play of the drive. Talk about wearing a defense down and chewing up time. Third and goal. Bradshaw, Wolfolk can't get there. Good job again by that front of Duke. That was Edgar Serenord, another big stop, fourth down. Now you got a big decision. Duke, yes. Their first shot, time out of time and a half. It's fourth and three. Does Jeff Munkin decide to kick the field goal, or does he decide to go for it and try and get the win? The answer when we come back. Five-point lead for Army, fourth down that's at the three-yard line. What do you think, Jay? Well, the analytics, I think, would tell you to go for it. I think you should kick a field goal here, go up eight. Jeff Munkin has followed the analytics throughout this entire year. He told us there's only one time he's gone against it. If you don't get it, you go for it on fourth down. The likelihood that you score a touchdown inside the five is less than 10%. But I think it's the right decision to kick this field goal. Well, on fourth down, a 20-yard attempt for Blake Wilson. Munkin looking on. Wilson right in the middle of the field. The hole to Potter. It's blocked! It's blocked by Duke! They've got it! They blocked the field goal, and the Blue Devils get 
give Army nothing. What an effort by Duke. Fields and company get the field goal block. Jeff Munkin decides to kick the field goal. They don't have the protection. Duke gets the block and a chance to win the game. Football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Chick-fil-A. Start game day strong with the new breakfast hash brown scramble bowl. By Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. And by Mcor. Build. Power. Service. Protect. Earl Red Blake, one of the greatest college coaches of all time, played his final two seasons here at West Point. And coached here for 18 years. We look back at the field goal block by Duke. That was Mike Ramsey, 99, right in the middle of your screen, just powering through, willing himself to get the block. Nothing that Blake Wilson could have done. The team captain who wasn't recruited hard. You can see Jeff Munger saying, oh, he blocked it. You and I said we disagree. There's a flag down before that field goal attempt. We'll get into that after the penalty. Here's Blake with a verdict. Defense, 12 players in for five yard penalty, first down. So the miscues for both teams here today. Look, I, I mean, how do you come out of a timeout, a TV timeout, yeah. have 12 men on the field in a situation like this? Yeah. So David Cutcliffe's guys get the ball now, first and five at the 22. Personally, Jay, I would have given the ball to Darnell Wolfolk there on that fourth down. If you get stopped, they still got the ball inside of the five. And how's that? Christensen laying the lumber. Loss of two. Loss of two on the Today's first online being brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. And again, we were talking during the last. You think Munkin went against the, the analytics there? I, I do. I think analytics Please told him. the game clock to 401. 401. I get the reports every week from the analytics company. I watch all the different teams. And I think he went against the analytics because I think it would have said if you don't get it and they get the ball right. the two yard line less than a 10 percent chance to score. Yeah that's that's my thought Christensen with 10 tackles but what's done is done and Duke now with less than four to go they got a ton of time Jones going to work open man Kent but he was down. As soon as he caught it Chris Taylor They brought Ryan Ingle on the safety on a safety blitz there. Duke's offensive line did a good job picking it up, giving Jones time to complete that pass and get the first down. So David Cutcliffe's team started 4-0. They've dropped their last five games. Had a bye week last week. Jones has time. Now runs out of it. Hit as he throws. Almost intercepted. England was in the neighborhood. So was Cam Jones. Ackerman came back with the pressure from behind Jones. He couldn't see him. There's Ackerman coming in the front. Duke was lucky that that ball wasn't intercepted. Yes, they were. There's Ryan England. Second and 10 now. From the 28 yard line. Jones, I got him again. Riley came in. The ball came out. No ruling yet. Fourth sack of the game. Riley with his second. They're saying Duke recovered this ball. Yes. Jay Bateman always the tells us. That the was down prior to losing possession. It's a good call. It was down. You could see that Jones was down. Jay Bateman always says we solve our problems with aggression. He brings Riley on the blitz. Now whistles halting play. That the runner was down prior to losing possession. The play is under review. So they're going to take a look. So when you and I watched it, we both felt like it was a good call. Let's see if that ball was out. Riley hits him. Jones has fallen onto his backside. So I think it's if the ball came out before his butt is on the ground. Right. Here we go. Riley's going to come from his right. There's the contact. And there's his butt hitting first. So does that ball come out before he's down? I don't know if you can tell from Top, that angle. This angle is going to show it. Yeah, this one should. 
really hard to tell Looks there. Like he's Riley's got, a got hit it. it. Riley might have it. Yeah, he did. But uh, there's the hit again. He's got a hand on it. So because the call on the field was that he was down, I don't see enough evidence to overturn it, even though I think Riley kind of had possession. Yeah. But Jones still has his left hand on the ball Agreed. until he hits the ground. So the call on the field was no fumble and that he was down. That's what Trey Blake, our referee, and He's on a headset with Steve Fredrickson, the replay communicator. The replay official today is Joe Ryder as we continue to look at the angles that they're looking at in the replay booth here at Mikey as well. There's the hit. You see the ball. You see Jones's hand still kind of on the ball. I, I just don't know if they, they say that's still in his possession or not. His hand is certainly still on the ball. Riley kind of has it. Jay Bateman being aggressive, dialing up the blitzes. So 2.51 to play in this game. Army trying to cap off their home season. Undefeated, haven't done that in 21 years on Veterans Day, on Seniors Day, on Senior Day. And trying to go to eight and two. If this call is overturned and Army gets the ball, Duke still has two timeouts. They do. They just blocked a field goal. So the game wouldn't be over. You couldn't run out the clock. Correct. You'd still have hope if you're Duke. The verdict is coming from Trey Blake, our referee. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Third down. There you go. So it stands. It just wasn't enough definitive evidence to overturn it. Was the ball coming out? It was coming out, but Jones had his hand on it. And that was the way they called it on the field and the play stands. So here we go, third and long. 18 after that sack by Riley, eight yard loss. Duke seven of 11 on third down. Jones pressure the complete. Fourth down upcoming. All kinds of heat put on. Voigt leading the charge in there. Brinson helping out too, Jay. Jay Bateman bringing the bitch. You see all the different movement up top, confusing the offensive line, getting in the backfield and making the hit, not allowing Jones to complete the pass. And I think that's the right call punting here. It's fourth and 18. You have two timeouts need to get on the field here and now if you're running out of time just take the delay that'd be fine don't risk another block punt because you're not ready army's not in punt return formation at all they're in standard defense nobody back there and they're going to get a break because this could have went a lot further than it did they'll down it just over the quickly 35 been going and downing that ball getting the clock stopped as quick as they could 2.24 to go. Army trying to close it out. We'll see if they can do it when we get you back. Late stages of this one here at Mikey Stadium. Just 2.24 left in it. Army on top by five here against Duke. And our tops crew sounds off tomorrow morning at 8 Eastern as our panel of NFL experts bring you up to speed on everything from the field through fantasy. Don't miss that other pregame show presented by Kubota on CBS Sports Network. So you're doing the math. As we came back there, what, what's the math telling you here in terms of Army potentially running this clock out? What do they got to do if they're going to do that? Well, if Duke can get a stop here, they got two timeouts, get a stop on this series right here, they can get the ball back with about a minute 30 left. If Army can run a couple plays and get a first down, use up one of those timeouts at least, then you're able to run the clock out. For Army, you fumbled one ball on a poor decision on a late pitch by Bradshaw, Protecting the ball is a must. We said earlier, preserving the right to punt. Something like that Brent that. Davis has talked about with Ahmad Bradshaw. Bradshaw's got Wolf Oak behind him. And Wolf Oak gets the ball, greeted there after a pickup of a couple. Wolf Joe Wolf Giles Wolf Harris, Wolf. the first one to get to him. Stopped by Giles Harris. Timeout. Timeout. Duke. Duke, the second Charles time out of the half. So 217 remaining. It'll be 30 seconds out. And one TO left for David Cutcliffe and his guys just a 30, so we're gonna stay here. David Cutcliffe talked to us about
managing the game, how it's something that he focuses on so much ever since his time with Bear Bryant. He's done such a great job with this Duke program. You know, 13 years before Cutcliffe took over, Duke hadn't won more than five games in a year. They've done it four times under Cutcliffe. They're going to win this one. They need a stop on this series. Second and seven upcoming as we look at Army's close calls this season. They won that Buffalo game in large part, the end of it there. The fake punt option by Schrag and the two lane one. That one's. That one sticks in your craw. Yeah, it does. <laughs> you give up three conversions on fourth down on the last drive. Wolfolk in the backfield. Bradshaw's got it. Come on, Bradshaw gets through there. Come on, Bradshaw's got a first down. What a gutty run by the senior out of Chicago. Wasn't about to pitch that ball. He fumbled on the one pitch. Timeout. Duke, their third and final time on the half. So Cutcliffe has to take his final timeout. Army with a fresh set of downs and 2-11 left. Two eleven remaining in the ball game. Army up by five. Well, we got a chance. Let's take a look at the college football playoff poll powered by Ram Trucks. Go to work on it, Feely. <laughs> That's a big one on CBS. Can't wait to watch that game. I mean, there's some big games up top that are going to decide a lot. I'm sorry to Corey Fishman, who works for us, who played in Miami. <laughs> you got him the other They're night going too. Down. I did. I got to do it to him. I think Auburn goes <laughs> down. I think TCU goes down, and it clears up a lot up at the top. And who's going to be those final four teams? I still got Georgia, Alabama, Notre Dame, and Oklahoma. And here's Ahmad Bradshaw. He moved past Trent Steelman. And rushing yards. Particulars on Ahmad Bradshaw. 20 for 96 and a touchdown today. He's one for one throwing the rock, Jay, for 42 yards. But what a career he's had. They can almost run this game out. Yeah. You know, if you take knees, you want to try to use up three, four seconds before you take a knee. If you do that, you can run it out. No timeouts left for Duke. You got 40 seconds each time in between plays. I would risk it handing the ball off. Army led 21 to three in the first half. Here's Bradshaw. Gives it off to Wolfolk, and he just plows his way forward. They'll take it all the way down here when they get back out of the mosh pit of people down there. Ramsey the tackle. Wolfolk with a touchdown today, his ninth of the season. So an injury timeout here for Duke. And yeah, that's Ben Humphreys, their middle linebacker, checking him out. We'll take a quick timeout and come back right after this. College football continues next. We're done here. Minute 57 left in this one. And Army's rival Navy will take on SMU later. It's a big Mountain West showdown as Boise State looks to remain undefeated in Mountain West play when they visit Colorado State at 1030 Eastern. And here on CBS Sports Network, that one presented by Best Western. And SMU and Navy following us for Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium in Annapolis. John Sadak, Randy Cross, she and Stanwick Birch, senior day there as well. And the American standings, see what that game means for those two teams. Memphis having a really good year. A big win against UCLA. So Army back on the field as Humphreys was taken off. They reset the play clock. Now oh, it's running down, so that was about 10 seconds or so. You don't have a 10-second runoff, only if it's under one minute. Right. Duke doesn't have any timeouts. Clock was running, so they didn't get the 10-second runoff, but they did reset the play clock. So it's second and six. Play clock down to five. Darnell Wolfolk gets it. And he's going backwards. So now you got a third down coming up. They lose a couple. So they'll continue to let this wind. Third and eight. Inside of a minute left now. 
Play clock coming up to 20 seconds. What do you think? Do you dare put the ball anywhere but in Bradshaw's hands here no and just go down? No, no way. I mean, give it to Bradshaw. Maybe allow him to get around the corner. If they he throw it here, if they no throw chance. it, <laughs> they, I'm just kidding. <laughs> They're taking a knee. I'm just yeah. kidding. They are. Because they did that to us once before is the only reason I said that. There's the knee. Come on, Bradshaw. And the Army Black Knights complete 2017 undefeated at home. They have not done that since 1996, folks. The two coaches, they have a lot of respect for one another. The two teams will gather. It was a hard fought physical game on Veterans Day here at Mikey Stadium. On Senior Day for Jeff Munkins, guys. And this one's a final. Army wins it by five to improve to eight and two. Huge win for Jeff Munkin and his staff. They wanted to be undefeated at home. They've done it. You can check this one off right here, undefeated at home. That's right. They've been winning the fourth quarter. They're going to go to a bowl game. Yep. They want to get that top 25 finish. They had to win this game to be in the running. They got a couple of votes in both polls this last week. They did. Jeff Munkin. Little got interested. Little subdued. Yeah, he is. how we've seen compared, him in some of those other games. Compared to what he's been, he goes over to Wilson. He's over there bench pressing chairs after the Eastern Michigan game, but he'll get him fired up when he goes in here, I think. A lot of mutual respect yes. between these coaches. No question about it. And the programs. There's Munkin. Get him fired up, coach. So we now invite you to listen and watch the West Point alma mater. and his team. They've got one more game before they'll meet Navy. It's against North Texas on the road. A 6-0 season. 8-2 record after 10 games for Army. To me, that's the most impressive win they've had all year. Yeah. I mean, it, it was more important to go down to Air Force and beat them. Sure. Because of everything that that rivalry entails. But this was a team that they had really struggled with. 13 to 6, they lost last year in the rain. 44 to 3, two years ago up here. A lot of the same players on this Army team. Duke was 2 and 1 in the last three years against Georgia Tech. 3 and 0 oh against Navy. 3 and 1 against Army under David Cutcliffe. They know how to stop the triple option. Punt block by Andy Davidson was huge in the first half. Couple of turnovers by Duke. Big win for Jeff Munkin and his staff. So some of the mutual respect we were talking about. Kwanzaa there was taking a picture with Elijah Riley. There's Gibson taking a shot with a Duke player and Bradshaw. He deserves England. to dance a little bit, have a little fun out there. Last time he'll play on this field. Bust a move. <laughs> Bradshaw posing for pictures. We'll be getting down to Tina Servacio momentarily. She'll have interviews with Jeff Munkin and some of their players. Just so happy for these guys. Yeah. We see them all the time. We've done so many games. Two and ten two years ago. And the progression for this team and these players and this staff is tremendous. No question. Down to Tina, who is with the victorious head coach, Jeff Munkin. Veterans Day on Senior Day. 
undefeated at home. What does that mean to you? I'm just proud of our team. I thought it was a great effort, and, and it's been that way all year, just fighting to find a way. We had to today. It's a very talented team there and, and very well coached team. Proud of the into the wall, we've, we've, we've answered the call. One of the keys to the game we talked about on the broadcast was getting production from your fullbacks. What did they have to do against this Duke defense that brings that pressure? Well, they're really stout, and uh, and they got a great plan, Duke does, on defense. And they've given us trouble running the ball the last two times we played them. And today it wasn't easy. Uh, but, but those guys ran hard. We had a determined group in front of them. Those offensive linemen, I thought, did a great job. Coach, uh, that, that blocked pun you know, with Davison, I, you said it was a game changer. How did I really predicate the, rest, the way the rest of the game? Especially a punt and return it for a touchdown, it does change the game. It changes the momentum, and it gave us some real breathing room. I mean, that's the difference in the game. And uh, we didn't do enough on offense, score enough points. To, to outscore them, it was that play that made the difference. And uh, and credit that group of guys. They take a lot of pride in it. And we practice blocking kicks a lot, and, and it worked out today. Defensively, really forced a lot of turnovers. What did you think about the defensive stance your team put up? Those guys, they knuckled down. They were ready to play and, and, uh, and did a great job. We got some balls back, and that made a difference, too. One, we made count. And the others, it just stalled the drives out. So uh, they're both big plays. But you can win the turnover. Coach, thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Back to you. Thank you, Tina. Thanks to Jeff Monk. And apologies for the audio issues there. We'll get those corrected. More interviews coming up on the field and more thoughts on this one. Army wins it by five. Back here at Mikey Stadium, and Army comes through with a five-point win, eight and two, six and zero oh here at home this season. First time in 21 years. Let's revisit your extra points, Feely, and see how they turned out. Well, no turnovers. The two big plays for Duke: the fumble and the interception. They had to get in the backfield and get tackles for a loss. Only had four. Army 62 percent. They were two and 12 the last two years in those situations, third and fourth and short, and shut down Sean Wilson. They certainly did that. So four check marks for Army, and it leads to a victory and an undefeated season at home here at Mikey Stadium. Very well done, and uh, very well done by Army, of course. And let's go down to Tina, who's got more interviews down on the field. Tina. All right, thank you, Ben. And my congratulations. What does it mean to you on Veterans Day, on Senior Day? to set to make that goal of going undefeated at home this season. It means a lot. You know, we, we set that goal in, in camp and to be able to finally start accomplishing some of our goals, it means everything to the seniors, to this team. And uh, that's what it's about. We play for each other. We play for the veterans. And, and it was great to get it done today. You know, today, Duke stymied you guys on a couple of drives. But what did you have to do to get that run game going and still power through? Uh, man, it was, it's, it's a, it's a, I can't give enough credit to the offensive line. They do a great job at, at knowing who to get, knowing, understanding defenses. And, and it was really those guys that got it going because, you know, without them, I wouldn't be nothing. The running backs wouldn't be anything. And, and they did a really good job today. Nice pass there to Kel Walker. How did that set things up for you then to run in your touchdown? Our coach said that we was going to have to, you know, if we had to call a pass play today, we was going to have to complete it. And uh, Kel ran a great route. He got open. The offensive line gave me great protection. All I had to do was get it to him. You know, how about that big play by Davidson, the block punt? You guys, you know, get back into that touchdown. How does that impact the rest of the game? Uh, it makes a big difference. Coach always talks about uh, making big plays and, and ha creating turnovers, and that was a big play for us. Andy practiced that in practice, and, you know, he did a really good job. All right, so you're done here at Mikey Stadium for your career, but still a lot of football still to be played. What are the goals that are on your mind for the rest of the season? Um, well, for the offense, I would say our biggest goal is to no turnovers, and we had a turnover today, so we still got to work on that. Uh, and that's going to be, you know, it's going to play a big role next week and, and, and going forward. So that's what I'm looking forward to, just not turn the ball over and continue to execute. Ahmad, congratulations. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Ben, back to you. Thanks, Tina. Thanks to Ahmad Bradshaw. Appreciate his time over the last three years of really getting to know him here at West Point. Great young man. Our final score, 21-16. After these messages, we'll send you to Brent Stover for a preview of number one Georgia, 10th ranked Auburn, coming up at 3.30 Eastern on CBS. Army, Navy, and Air Force bring excitement and honor when they meet for the Commander-in-Chief's Trophy Games. Last three meetings in the series, 
Last December, Army faced Navy for the 117th time. They had lost 14 straight games. This is from this season. Navy beating Air Force and then Army shutting out Air Force. I thought Jeff Munkin was gonna surf the crowd there and it's the Commander in Chief trophy and we'll see the all time wins in that series. Air Force with 20, Navy with 15, Jay. Army hoping they get number seven this year. It's been a long time, 1996. They're gonna have an opportunity when they play Navy Philadelphia, that'll be a big game. It was a huge win last year for Army. Can they do it again and win the CIC? Yeah, they hadn't beaten them since 2001, and they've got it done last year, and it's all set up for them now. They still have one more game left. They'll go a on the road. Game. Yeah, it won't be easy against North Texas. Yeah, they lost to them last year in the regular season, beat them in the bowl game. North Texas 6-3 and three coming into today, so that'll be a tough game. Can't look ahead to that Navy game. And, and that'll probably be hard, but the way Jeff Munkin has this team, it seems as focused as they've ever been. Shouldn't be that bad for him, I wouldn't think, but you never know. They are young kids. I've been thoroughly impressed with Jeff Munkin and what he's done. His staff, Jay Bateman, Brent Davis, understanding who they are, finding a way to win at a place that's difficult, and now sitting here at 8-2. 8-2, 6-0 at home. It was another fun year up here. I had a lot of fun with you and John Always, and you're Tina. the best, Ben. Well, back at you. We had a good time, and... A lot of fun doing the games here at home. We wish Army well moving forward. That'll do it for our broadcast here this afternoon. To get our final score, Army 21, Duke 16 for Jay Feely, Tina Servacio, all of our crew, our producer, Bruce Clark, director Warren Pick. My name is Ben Holden. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Let's now get you to Annapolis, Maryland for Senior Day as SMU takes on Navy. On the call, John Sadak, Randy Cross, and Sheehan Stanwick-Birch from Annapolis.